Greetings and welcome back to another episode of I'd Rather Be Shaving. I'm Douglas Smythe from PhoenixShaving.com and with me to my left is... Matt Pesarsic, Razor Emporium. Today is one of our most requested episodes ever. And sadly enough, it would just be way too long if we actually gave you what you wanted. So we're only going to give you a slice. A so slice. To speak. Just a sliver of our vintage blade knowledge. All things vintage blades, blade banks, how to make your own blade bank, storing blades, sanitizing blades. Holy shit, there's a sink in front of me. Yeah. And that too on today's episode of I'd Lather Be Shaving. Today, we are going to be shaving with modern blades and vintage blades. And seeing that the vintage actually stack up, the new old stock actually stack up against a modern blade. Behold what Matt has in front of us. Behold what Matt has in front of us. That doesn't make the Psycho Tech Razors. These Locked. have been, been preloaded with Me a too. vintage razor and a modern razor, A and B. And so we're going to compare these and see which one we are. Unknowingly, like. yeah, we're going to compare no them. No idea. We can't see. So, and this will kind of, you know, put to rest, uh, can I shave the new old stock blade? Which yeah. many will agree you can. Um, you, you just got to check with your eyes first, so on and so forth. I'll talk about that later. Let's just do this. So. All right. I'm trying A first. I'm actually need to. Wow. That is aggressive. That is like super aggressive. Okay. Uh, it feels like it's pulling my hair more than cutting my hair. I don't even want to continue, really. Yet he oh. does. Now, granted, I have about five days worth of growth, so um, it is a lot to go through. Okay, let's try this out. So, A. Oh. Right? A is kind of rough. Not fun. Now, I'm going to try B here. Ah, smooth shaving. Effortless. Gliding. Oh. Not even funny, the difference. The first one for me, what do you think so far? I'm getting into it. I just had to learn the angle. Really? Really. I'm impressed. Of course, how many, how many days has it been since you shaved, Doug? Well, I shaved every day. How many days has it been for you? I How said, I said five. Oh, I heard five beers. Okay, so now I'm trying B. Oh, that's interesting. I don't even think this is working. Yeah, uh, B is a, is a clear winner for me. Um, it's mowing through hair like there is no tomorrow. I'm inclined to go out on a ledge here and say that B, at least in my razor, is the feather razor blades and A was the gold tone. These are from 1940. Um, gold tone, rust resistant blades. I, you know, I think they are chrome covered or chrome plated. No, like gold plated. They're gold plated. Gold, gold. Well, that's what the advertising was. Mm -hmm. In fact, when we make our way over to our table, I'll. Uh, I'll read you what it says, but yes, there's something to do with, that's where the gold tone comes from. Now let me, let me, let me try A again, just to get, you know, be fair, I'll try a different area. Well, the thing is, with feathers, for me, they're not that great on the first shave. They're great on the second and third. I mean, this is not... I, you know, it is a little more aggressive, the one in A, but I kind of like it. I wouldn't even call it aggressive. It's to me, it's rough. That's the best word I could say is rough. That it doesn't feel like it's cleanly cutting the hair. It feels like it's more of tugging. It could have been hand, like palm honed. I think palm strop rather. Think that would make a difference? I think so. Now, what razor blade is your go-to at home, Doug? Feather or Bolzano. Okay. Well, being that I just used a, a new old stock blade and a feather which is for just one shave, I've had, this is probably the crappiest shave I've ever had in my life. <laughs> yeah. Razor A was definitely the vintage. It was, Doug, what do you think? I agree with him. Yeah, Razor B was for sure the feather. 
Survey says? You're correct. We are correct, says Marissa off camera. Um, that doesn't really surprise me. I've heard legendary things about other blades, like the Super 74, Teflon 74. Have you heard that one, the Persona? Yeah. Persona 74s. I've heard some legendary blade ideas out there. Well, this is the golden age of vintage blades, and those, I definitely, if you want to use a vintage blade, <laughs> here comes the, the advice and the recommendations now. Uh, I would say go for something from the 70s. That was the golden, golden era of uh, DE blades, and that's when three of the big companies really upped their game. They had the technology, they, they had, had the good and packaging. They, and they had the competition. Um, mm -hmm. We'll actually be looking at some of those in just a little bit, but yeah, that's the era where you can still buy them new in the pack, and they're, you're gonna pay about a buck a blade now on eBay, but totally worth it, especially when it comes to Shik, Platinum's, but we'll go into that in a bit. Let's go to the desk. Let's do it. Yowza! Yowzers. Are we filming? We are filming. Oh, hey, welcome back. So, now we're just gonna delve into it. Matt can begin this segment. Well, how was your shave? How my you shave feeling? was most excellent. It's actually, you know, it was, it was probably the crappiest shave I've ever had in my life. So not most excellent. Not at all. That was a lie. <laughs> Do you lie often? Only when I'm sleeping. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. So speaking of lying, I'd be lying if I didn't tell you that vintage blades were the hottest thing. <laughs> <laughs> the thing with vintage blades that we probably should cover right the really, way we didn't cover in the first segment is back in the day they were a tad bit thicker. Yes. You know, so if you want to have truly experience the, the classic shave with a vintage Wait. razor, you might really want to try using a vintage blade as well just to get that effect because it was a different feel because that's of the thickness true. of the blade. That's true. This is this is like heavy stuff. Let me see that. What do we got here? That's the, that's the gold one we used earlier. Oh yeah. But I've, I've heard that a lot with the really old Gillette blades, the old three holers, if you know what I'm talking about. I don't. Uh, with the rounded corners. The original uh, Gillette blades, they were so thick that in fact if you loosened the handle it would actually adjust oh, the I know exactly. Like, yeah, those are like, I was holes. thinking of a website. Uh, yeah, they're like slate. It's like shaving with slate. Yeah, um, so, but uh, people always ask, and we've got this question a million times, can I use vintage blades? I picked up this really cool set that came with a pack of, you know, Gillette Blue Blades or Thin Blades or, or whatever. should I? Should I? Should I? Is it, is it dangerous? Is it okay? Or will it hurt my collection? And, or my face. <laughs> and possibly both, actually. But go on, go on. Will I get a staph infection? <laughs> yeah. The um, entire staff, they were infected. Yes, with bubonic plague. plague. Bring out your dead! Bring out your dead! Um, so the, the, the quick answer is, yes, you can use a vintage blade. Um, I would just always look out for rust, for patina, for obvious signs that it's, you know, looks pretty treacherous, if it's been damaged, chipped, all this kind of stuff, obviously don't use. And like we were saying during the shave, look for the, the blades that are new old stock condition, that you're gonna crack them out of a blister pack or open them out of a, 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 container, like a container like this, and you know, you're the first ones to ever touch that blade. But don't be surprised if it's not your favorite shave in the world. There are some of these 1970s golden air, like Doug was saying. That right are, here. Yeah, that are like really, really hot stuff. But the, the ones from this era, like these old 40s, 50s, like they're beautiful. There's some really great collectible ones. Like we have some of these, like this is the series of, of nude razor blades. I didn't tell you you were bringing nudies. I know. Close your eyes, everyone. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Can, I, can I see them? <laughs> oh, yeah. You can see it. These are pretty hot. But, um, ch um, you know, there's some awesome collectible razors out there. Now, these are called Model Blade Company, New York. Um, but that doesn't mean you have to use them. You can give it a shot, but they may not just be the most favorite shave in the, in the whole wide world. And I, I will do nothing other than... Can I keep this? No. no. I will do no, nothing other than hypothesize that it's, that it's sharpening techniques. Um, I know in the world of straight razors in the last, you know, 20, 30, 40 years, Synthetic stones have gotten crazy. I mean, there are so much advancements in sharpening. I can only think that back in the 40s and 50s, it wasn't as good as it is now. And steel technologies, coatings, platinum, chromium, all these crazy things. I agree. Have made blades just better and better and better. I agree. They weren't focusing on the blades no. back then. I mean, when it comes to competitions, it comes, you know, I mean, when it, the competition is what drove the 70s, the, the, the blade race, I guess right. you call it. It's like the and, space race. And I think they were more focused on the, the razors back then, competing with the razors. Unless they were selling a proprietary blade to come with the razor, I don't think blades were really on their mind. And it's funny because whenever I tell anyone I'm into vintage razors or old school razors, they always say, God, those razors shaved horribly. 
And no, they, I mean, if you talk to someone in the 60s, 70s and above about double-edged razors, they're gonna tell you how horrible the shaves were. And it may be because they were using blades that even in the day were not that great. Yeah. No, it's true. I mean, even Gillette stole some funky blades in their time. They did. Yeah, they did. Uh, so some of the real collectible does. So one of the cool things you can do with vintage blades is collect them. So uh, we did an episode a while back about dispensers, and this is a whole kind of category of, of collecting blades. Like this is a really cool demonstrator pack. So if you, you know, when this technology came out of the of loading the blades with this mechanism, this was the one that the salesman would take and actually show how it worked to the storekeeper. So it's pretty collectible. I just want to know why the color. I think it so didn't get mixed up. So he, if he well, left it on the counter. What's the big deal if he had another one? If yeah, he left it on the counter, it's like, oh, did you take did you take ours? Like, you don't want to go in there and say, hey, let me open up a pack of blades. I think they, they gave it to us just so they can demo okay, it. Okay, fair enough. And it does say demonstrator on it. It does. The demonstrator. He wasn't lying. That was, uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, what was that? Let's go back to, what, what was that? Oh. I'm not allowed to use the catchphrase anymore. Oh. Yeah, so I, I caught myself. Oh, you did? Yeah, I did. It's the uh, whole high school thing. It yeah. Makes. You didn't go to high school, so. <laughs> homeschooled. Yeah. Um, but another kind of interesting. Parochial homeschooled. <laughs> yeah. Did you have like the hair and all like? I don't know what that means. I could take little like. I couldn't have, no, that's not parochial. <laughs> Go on. So anywho, um, one other interesting thing that happened with blades, back in the day, Gillette were, was trying to secure their, their trademark rights. And so one of the- uh, Always, this is always yeah, the thing with them. One of the things with trademarks is you have to show usage. You can't just keep a name forever. And so you can't sit on it. No. So Gillette literally packaged up some of these names of things they made, like the Richwood. That's from the 20s, the Richwood. Just to use And it. they sold it. And so, hey, now you have a Richwood blade pack. And now we've said we're we could, using it. We're using it. Is really fun. That, that's why I say. Great lawyers. Yeah. They're great lawyers. Uh, yeah. Sharpie, obviously, as you know, is the bird. Sharpie. Obviously. Not many people know that. Yeah. Part. Techmatic was being used as a razor handle in the 70s. But they, you know, they just sold a pack of blades. That's an interesting way. To Even do this, it. the the misspelling of Gillette, because there were there were competitors trying to rip off the Gillette name because people don't know how to spell Gillette, and so they Using they kind giant. of you know they kind of usurped their competitors by. It's a pretty name, Gillette. Gillette. You know, and the this thing is, is the people are, that that game is still going on today with Roland like Pago. domains, sitting on domain names and whatnot. Yes, this is like this is like domain names back yeah. in the day. Roland Pago, what the heck is that? And it, why are they holding on to it? Chippendale, that was from the late 20s, another set. Oh, okay. Uh, that another was, site. That was another site, Douglas Set runs. site. Yeah, DouglasChippendale.com, check it out. Okay, what else we got? Um, yeah, just uh, uh, some other blister packs. I mean, have you ever seen the Proback blades? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this was actually a Gillette. Uh, Gillette division. Yeah, division of Gillette. when they it got acquired. Nice. But so, I mean, and this is some camo blade. These are from the 40s. So. I can't see them. What are you holding, Matt? Yeah, it's camouflaged. Whoa. Oh, it's gone. I haven't seen those before. Yeah. Okay, what else we got? 1947. So, Doug, what do you got? I thought you'd never ask. I know, I ask, almost never did. Ask. Um, well, I have some real strange ones here. Actually, not so strange. Two of them aren't strange, but these right here, my friend, Still angle. angle. These are super. I love these. If you're a collector of blades, you need to pick these up. I love the font. I love the label and everything. It's, you know, this is amazing. This it's a multi dimensional shaving. Yeah, which would make you think it probably came out in the 50s when it was like Atomic Age. And it else. does look very much like That's that. That's what I thought it was when I was getting into it. But, but these come from 1929. Wow, these, ahead of their time. It really, I mean, the, the advertising on the back's great too. They, but that font, that all blocky font, I mean, it's totally 50s, 60s. I think looking. so too. But, you know, at the time, the sci fi world. You're trying everything. But multi dimensional shaving. That's what's quoted Attacks on the Attacks your beard. Three vital angles. Stroke. Blade clearance. And fallus position. Nope. Follicle position. Oh, follicle. I don't know I'm not wearing my glasses, buddy. Yeah. Anyway, so check this out. Follicle. This was to fit a special shaped razor. I wish Ooh. I had the razor with me, but I, we only have photos. It almost looks check like it out. goes in a slant bar razor. Yes. <laughs> it almost looks like it goes in a... You know, I, I, I've, I've come across a still angle now that I've seen that. Yeah. With the, it's multi dimensional, like, it's like stilted. And stilted. that is, uh, that'll apparently hit the three vital areas when shaving. But this is, again, it's a thicker blade. Wow. Oh, yeah. But it's really weird. Steel. If you can find the razor, is super rare. Show us. Find it. Find and it. Sell it to me. Uh, super stoked about these, though, in my collection. They just really are such a unique blade to have. And then we also obviously have the gold tone that we started off the show with. 
And um, what are these? These are gold, goldenized. I don't know what that means, but I don't think it's real gold. No, that looks like some kind of chemical etch process or electro etch process but to, to they, change a the color. They stood out, you know, in the world of blue bl uh, blades and everything else. True. But oh, I just want to hop back to the uh, silver Still angle. really quick. This was invented of uh, the mayor of Bradford, Pennsylvania, back in the day. Is it paper? The mayor? Yeah, the mayor, who was also an embalmer at one time or another. So I don't know if he ever used these or not on, I don't know what he was testing. Maybe on. he was used to things being held still? Ooh. Actually, his last name was Still. Jack Still, in fact. Oh. Uh, but that, uh, moving on to the Gold Tone. Gold Tone, 1940, as we mentioned at the beginning of the show, uh, and in, created in Newark, New Jersey. Okay. Carbon steel. Crappy shaves nowadays. <laughs> Actually, no, that was the batch we used. Uh, I still encourage you to try them. They were a little rough. And last but not least, I brought, uh, see I buy complete packs as I mentioned before, the Don Juan. Now I have seen these in antique stores. I, I come across these. All the time, they made so many of them. They're from New York, uh, 1950s, around yeah. there. Blue colored, and also no glue dots. Glue dots are really important to me when uh, any blade, any blade I use, it's important to look for the glue dots on there so you know that's not shifting around the pack and dulling. Huffing. But a lot of, I don't think they thought about this back in the day. So, uh, cause you, how far into the future do you think these were gonna go? Not very far. Exactly. I mean, most blade makers want you to get rid of the blades as fast as possible to buy more. Yeah. So those are a few of the vintage ones I brought. And these, again, the golden age of the 70s. If you can pick these up, plus platinum, double edge blades by uh, Schick are some of the best all-time blades to this day. I've also heard the tungsten steel Persona 74s. Oh, yes. Yes. Those were like legendary, Persona 74s. I love the Schick, though. This was turned on, a friend of mine turned me on to these at a, a meetup. Your friend turned you on? <laughs> To these at a meetup. So why are these considered like one of the best ones out there? Well, I mean, you can read all about that in the forums, but you could also read it on the back of the pack right here. <laughs> See that? Shark, uh, Schick sharpens its finest steel and applies a platinum alloy, alloy to provide you with an edge that stays smooth to give you a close, safe shave. For about 40 years, people, this stuff is awesome. So it's all about the coating in the So, sense. So did you find, because you use these, I did. Have you found they last longer than like a Feather or Bozzano? No, nope, I find they probably last about the same amount of time. But again, I mean... Smoother... Smooth. A smooth shave. Smooth shave. It was Gillette, Wilkinson's, and Schick that were really going head-to-head -head in the 70s. And they right. really upped their game with their coatings they were applying to the razors, uh, the razor blades. And you will notice a difference. And it's definitely worth checking out. Again, it's a little bit costly, about a buck a blade. But this is what, a uh, five pack? So five bucks, six bucks, eight it's bucks. It's still less than a cartridge. And just for the historical reference, I will say the little case here though. Right. It can be a bitch to get out of that. It's it's probably like a rip off of these dispensers. It's a very, it's a, it's a dispenser. And if you don't know that, if you don't have a hook on the end of your blade, it can be uh, playing around with it. Regardless, you got to try them out. Super stoked about them. So when you got all these cool vintage blades, what do you do about storage? I see some kind of container over there. What well, you, this what's is your new. favorite storage method? My storage method for vintage blades. Well, for these, if they're in the cases, I just leave them in the leave case and put them in my display case. Um, but I typically keep them in a cool, dry place. I have a closet off my bathroom I keep them in. The temperature in your bathroom, depending on how big your bathroom is, will fluctuate up and down, which isn't the best thing for preserving anything old. So that even goes, you know, uh, vintage aftershaves and whatnot, the boxes, I'm really worried about keeping them in the bathroom. So a cool dark place as with anything else. That's what I do. But when it comes to storing modern blades and whatnot, here's a dispenser right here. Ooh. Yeah, this is uh, by Frugal Shaves. And this is a really, um. you know, you, you can take one out at a time. And uh, it was really neat. It was 3D printed, but he has a sponge in there. It's like a little, so it's like, it's a, like spring. a spring. It works as a spring. So as, uh, as you're using it, it pops up. But really cool. This is so I just got this uh, not too long, about a week ago. I like uh, it. Yeah, I have yet to load it all the way. But that is a dispenser I you use. You gotta go all the way, Doug, within a week. I do have to go all the way. Uh, I, you know, you can get dispensers for single edge blades. They use yes. them for the, the, your workshop and whatnot. But you can load that with uh, gem blades if you want. But I'm not, I don't, not too hip to dispensers. This is the first one I've ever really used. Yeah. Um, I just typically keep a pack with me, you know what I mean? I think Doug has a really good point about keeping blades, your, your main supply of, of blades, whether it's vintage or modern, away from the moisture of your bathroom, which maybe is kind of a little inconvenient, or at least in a cooler, more contained place, like a cabinet or, any, you know, kind of tucked away plastic yeah. container. Even underneath the sink where we store a lot of stuff, the temperature goes up and down there when the hot water goes to the sink and the cold water. And I live in Arizona, so it's all over the place. Oh, you live here? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> PhoenixShaping.com. Yes. Uh, now, okay, so the other big part of, of Blade is not just how to store them, but how the heck to get rid of them. I mean, as you guys know from our last episode, I just throw them on the ground. And I stick them in dead hookers under my bed. 
but there are proper ways to get rid of them. I've seen stuff like this, like this is something we actually use in the shop that um, is, you know, meant for blades itself and you can drop them in there and they're kind of stored away safely. You guys have a soda pop. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and there's lots of conventional blade banks out there, but there's also, like, like here's another example, like you guys see these things around often, just oh, kind of a little, tin ones. Yeah, yeah, these little, you know, metal Are tin. they reusable? Yeah, you can open it up. It's like a piggy bank. There's some classic ones too that you'll find and you can still use. They weren't reusable, but you can shake the blades out of the slit. Colgate made yeah. a couple of like porcelain ones back in the day, uh, different animal shapes and whatnot. Uh, I love those, in fact. If you can find those, they're great decor for your shave station. But to use them now can be a pain in the butt just to get the blades out after the fact. Yeah. So it's all about finding something that you can use now and uh, not worry about emptying out after. Oh, here we go. So there's also a lot of DIY blade storage. There is. I don't think this is the brightest one, but go on. No, but speak. I mean, so Douglas was, we were assembling the table and, and I said, this is this makes for a great He pulled storage. out a bottle. It was the first time I've ever seen him pull one out that was empty. Yeah, so he, he didn't think that this was safe. So I'll show you how safe it really is. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's not the safest thing in the whole wide world. Oh man, that's just too much. Ah, uh, broken half. Yeah, see this? Yeah, just. Sh and it's a glass bottle. If you have kids around the house, you don't want to. Like, what? That is just a lawsuit. Yeah, I <laughs> got it. And then seal it up. And now, if you know, if you want to get these blades out, you got to break the glass. For your side in a bottle, folks. <laughs> no. Pretty much. Uh, that's nice and all, but I mean, you can you know do it really easily as well. Banks. When you go shopping. Piggy banks? Piggy banks. Piggy banks. You don't want to think that's going to attract a child to it, but you can find vintage banks, banks made of all types of stuff. This is one that I actually use a lot, and this is a tea container. Tea comes in here, as you can see, uh, but it also doubles as a bank. Does it have that slot or did you put that in? It has the slot. And that's for pulling a tea bag out? Nope. It's for a bank after the, you're done using the tea. Oh, okay. So banks work great for um, blade banks. I love those the, the depictions on here. Yeah, you would. I don't know what that means. But you can also make your own, as Matt tried and failed at. No, it but succeeded. Here, try to get it out. No, I don't even want to touch that. But you can make your own out of a, a uh, just a tin can. Yeah. And I will demo that right now. Let's have some chicken soup. That's right, folks. <laughs> Okay, and that's that. Wow. Now take your glass bottle and just go kick stones on a beach somewhere, my friend. This is a message in a bottle. And the message is, uh, is <laughs> stay the <laughs> <f> away. <laughs> yeah, this is, that's hazard. But yeah, simple as that, folks. Live it, love it, learn it. Yeah. Own it. Uh, and child proof. No one's gonna get in there. Now, will it work with a thing of like uh, beans, like a bean can? No, you wanna use a broth or evaporated milk. And why is that? Why are they canning evaporated milk? What does that look like? Yeah. Uh, because it's, not, it's gonna pour out easy. And, then, and I also recommend you rinse this out, uh, dump it out again with water, uh, and let it dry overnight so it's completely dry inside before you start using it. But if you had beans, it'd be like the beans like cushion the blade, like they're kind of like tucking the blade in. Well, how about our viewers try that and get back to us in the comments below? I think we should have some bean blades. I don't even have any. Beanie to say blades. That. No, it doesn't work at all. Pillows for the bean, like the, the blade goes down. It's like rests it's like, like rest on a little bean. <laughs> Well, there you have it, folks. This has been our much-anticipated Blade episode. And uh, I don't think I have anything more to say about this. I have one thing to say, and that's stay sharp. And, um, you know, get that slice out of life. And uh, have a keen shave. Please. Please subscribe, like, and comment below to enter our giveaway. That's right, our weekly giveaway. And you can win an aftershave and soap. That's, that's right, right, folks. That's right. And that's been another killer episode of I'd Like to Be Shaving. Yeah, we hope you enjoyed it. I had to go. The bathroom. Blade Walker. Blade Runner. 
Have a good one. See you next time.